Hi, I'm with Annie Longsworth. Are you CEO now? Mm -hmm. CEO of Saatchi and Saatchi S. Mm -hmm. And we're at South by Southwest Eco in Austin. And I'm just excited to get to know you a little yeah. bit more. I had the privilege of seeing you the other day at a New Resources Bank um, conversation that you were having that was hosted. And um, I was just really inspired by you. I've heard your name around from a lot of people. Thanks. And a lot of friends, mm -hmm. you know, our friend Kate, you know, and so I was like, wow, I get to meet you mm -hmm. finally. You're kind of legendary. <laughs> that's not that's not a good word. No, it was it was a good one. No, it was a good one because, um, you know, when I get to hear you talk the other night, we were just speaking a little bit earlier, is you had created this whole conversation. Your business card says, what is it? Something about irresistibility. Mm -hmm. What What's irresistible to you? What's irresistible to you? Yeah. And I thought, what a great question. Yeah. You know, so I just kind of want the community at Evokes to know a little bit more yeah. about you and the kinds of projects that inspire you in yeah. life and kind of your focuses of your organization okay. and then some projects that you're interested in. Cool. So um, the idea around irresistibility is from the roots of um, Sachi and Sachi S, which was started by Adam Warbach about six years ago. And we try to make sustainability irresistible. Hmm. And in our, in our minds, it's a lot more interesting and a lot more fun to look at sustainability as an opportunity to bring people in because it tastes better, it makes you money, it uh, brings you joy, it keeps you healthier. All of the good reasons, um, those are much more attractive than the it's bad, shame, guilt, you know, uh, animals are dying, planet is dying kind of reasons. Yeah. So it's fun to be able to wake up and say, how can I make sustainability irresistible today, mm -hmm. every day? Mm -hmm. um, and we do that both in our, our practice, but also with the clients that we work with. Mm. Yeah. So, so what are some of your favorite projects that you're working on? You don't have to mention the clients, but what are some of your favorite initiatives and yeah. things that you guys have been working on? So we work in sort of three different areas. We work on strategy work, which is really cool right now because a lot of companies who, they have sort of their operational sustainability in place, but now they're trying to figure out how to deepen it or how to differentiate themselves through some new partnerships or new types of work. So um, we're helping with some strategy work with some really interesting companies. Mm -hmm. We do communications work, uh, so that's always fun because you get to go out and do the PR and the social media and start the conversations and get people buzzing. Um, and then the most interesting thing we're doing right now though is sort of reviving our employee engagement program um, because so many companies have started to recognize that their employees our consumers, first of all, are the best ambassadors for their brand and don't necessarily uh, know what to do when it comes to sustainability. Mm -hmm. So we're helping companies figure out how to translate um, and, and engage their employees to make them part of their story. So what do you think the challenges are right now? Like when one of the things I think we're confronting as a brand that evokes right now mm -hmm. is um, I feel like there's been a lot of skepticism and cynicism inside of the world of, it's been called green, it's been the sustainable community, it's been the Lojas community, it's the eco community, it's all of it. And I, I feel like one of our challenges that evokes right now is how do we get our arms wrapped around um, a number of people who have kind of gone, hey, if you smell like a big business, if you act like a big business or react like a big business, we don't want to have anything to do, you, mm. do with you, yet we'll still shop in some of the big box stores. And it's like kind of the values feel like we have these values, but we'll throw them all away because we're so resigned and cynical that we'll still make decisions that wouldn't go that in the right direction for us anyway. Right. Do you experience any kind of the cynicism and resignation in some well, of the markets that you deal with? I think so. I mean, I see this interesting relationship between consumers and corporate. You know, we both have a responsibility to sort of make the world change. Both have expressed that they really want that to happen, and yet they continue to be in opposition of each other for some reason that I can't quite get. So there's consumer cynicism, and then corporates are saying, well, we're not gonna do this unless the consumers really want us to, and they're not paying, you know, they're not showing us with, you know, buying with their wallet, voting with their wallet idea. And yet, everybody wants to work together, so why is it so hard? And in right. my mind, the, the, the companies need to innovate irregardless of um, the consumer demand because they have a lot of other reasons that they need to be paying attention to this stuff. Mm. And when they start giving consumers better options, that's when the consumers are going to give them the, you know, the dollar share that they're looking for. Well, I was um, downstairs. We have some of the auto dealers, you know, some of the big brand mm -hmm. auto companies inside South by Southwest Eco. Yeah. And I was just talking with them about their adoption rate, like how many people are actually in the market. And Toyota has captured a huge part of the market. Mm -hmm. You know, their campaigns have been fresh. They've been interesting. They've been fun. Sachi client. Oh, they are? Mm -hmm. Oh, right on. Yeah. Good job. Well, and, Not and, S, just for the record. But still, but still, but still that's really great. Yeah. It's part of your family, right? Yeah. Um, and, and I look at, so my father, 
worked at General Motors for his entire life, mm -hmm. retired after 35 years. And so I come from Detroit and you know I have that kind of mindset. And then I look at what Chevy tries to do with the Volt and stuff like that and it makes it, and even Ford, I mean Ford was at one of the conferences earlier, mm -hmm. a sustainability yeah. conference. And I just find that it's interesting that they come to the events that are kind of, um, I think we're kind of in this transition period from being organic, homegrown kind of people, mm -hmm. and we're putting on our big boy panties mm -hmm. and big girl panties mm -hmm. and, you know, like growing up and yeah. saying, hey, profit really matters, and it does. Yeah. Um, but I find that there's when they are on stage and they're talking about their products and stuff, there's a lot of people who are just like standing here like this, mm -hmm. like going cynical. They're cynical yeah. about it, and I just wonder, do you do you approach that with some of your clients as well and try to train them on how to um, reach out to a community like the eco sustainable community? I mean, very yeah. powerful, 1.4 trillion dollar market yeah. or more, right? Yeah. So, how do you work with those folks? Um, we, you know, we're asking a lot of companies right now and they're not doing it as quickly as they should be or as willingly or as transparently. But I do think there are a lot of companies that are trying really, really hard to change, you know, instilled behaviors and, and sort of be more responsive to the opportunity and the crisis that we are facing right now. So, you know, consumers have a right to be cynical. You know, they don't trust corporations right now. They've been disappointed and, you know, that's a given. And I think it, it's on, the onus is on the corporation to go a little further and rebuild that trust. And, and you really, really embrace the idea that, that skepticism can be healthy mm. and they have to sort of go over, um, out of their way to convince consumers that they're sincere. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting to see a lot more corporations are having like directors of sustainability and yeah. it's putting in and that almost almost creates another level of cynicism because you're like now they're just trying to greenwash something or they're trying mm -hmm. to package it in a way so I mean your company probably helps people you know coordinate and find that pathway to really reach consumers heart versus you know break through all that stuff that has people be concerned about am I being sold a bill of goods or something right and and what I love about S is that we do both the strategy and the communications, right? So if we're if we're working with a company that isn't uh, doing enough, as if they're not doing as much as they're talking about, we have to pull them back from the talking and increase the doing. If they're doing a lot but not talking about it, they're not getting credit and they're not getting the awareness, so then we sort of amp up the talking. Like there has to be this balance, you mm -hmm. know? And that's how consumers build trust, I think, is that they see iterative movement. Um, consumers aren't going to suddenly say, oh my God, you're going to save the world? Yay, I'm in. But they're going to say, oh, you've made this small change in your product? That's interesting. Let me pay a little bit more attention. And you have to do it sort of step by step. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to shift gears here for okay. a second. So I'm in the media space. So evokes, right? <laughs> Programming, content. We have an online retail store. Yeah. We're going live television, a la QVC, HSN coming up mm -hmm. here soon. So we're, we're, we're positioned great inside of the... As a company, I think we have a really interesting play of sustainability and programming. We can reach mass markets and drive sales mm -hmm. and help you know showcase vendors who are doing really great stuff on the planet. However, being doing programming is very interesting for us because you can do short form content and you can you know do an ad rev you know kind of strategy yeah. what you're doing. But um, it's when people say that drama sells, it really does. Mm -hmm. When people say bad news sells, it really does. Mm -hmm. And I think for a brand like Evokes or some of the other, you know, kind of consciousness awareness brands out there in the market, um, they've all struggled. I mean, current TV, yeah. you know, you look at Oprah's ratings yeah. just down the tank and a lot of the programming isn't really representative of how I view her brand. Mm -hmm. And um, Varia Living, you know, you have um, Crime and Eat. There's, there's a whole yeah. bunch of them. Yeah. And they all seem to struggle around either being put inside of a yoga channel kind of thing mm -hmm. or a enlightenment channel mm -hmm. of some sort. And I, I mean, how do you navigate the waters from your perspective? I mean, you do this work. How do I have consumers be really interested in watching content that evokes that isn't drama driven, that's mm -hmm. not bad news driven, mm -hmm. and, and still make money? How, how would you think we could approach that? <laughs> this is your business. I know. Ah, it's my business, okay. but you know, but it takes, I mean, part of our business model is our community needs yeah. to give us feedback. Yeah. And it has to be really straight feedback, otherwise we're not gonna develop programming they want. Right. And if they say we want bad drama and they're really authentic about it, we're not gonna be that brand. Yeah. And we won't survive. Yeah. You know? All right, so I have two answers okay, to your good. question. Um, I think I've already forgotten one of them. But <laughs> one of them is uh, there's been a real reticence to use humor in this conversation mm -hmm. because people feel like, well, it's a very serious conversation. We need that drama. We don't want to make light of any of these issues. And there's sort of the sense of not being taken seriously if you are actually able to um, bring some levity to the discussion. I think there's a huge need for that. So I would say, let's have some, some comedy 
on Good. evokes. Perfect. So that's Love one. that. Yeah. Um, and the other is that people um, really the switch happens. The light goes on when something happens to them personally. So whether that's uh, an experience that they have um, that's positive or um, and, and and asked for, you know, where they put themselves in a situation where they're going to experience someone else's pain or where they can help somebody, then it becomes very personal and. I think any way that a, a channel can actually pull people in and get them involved, you know, so that that light bulb switches for them is going to be the, the key. So I think it's an online, offline kind of thing. Interesting. Yeah, we're playing with it. I mean, I'm clear. We, we're, we're trying to carve out some new territory to yeah. here. And um, it's going to be interesting to see what plays out when you see channels struggling. And I know there's so much play in the OTT space right now. I mean, it's easier than ever to create a channel and compete. Yeah. But ultimately, you have to have great content, otherwise yeah. you're just out of business. And, yeah. You know, whatever. Um, for you personally, yes. what's the thing that inspires you most? What's your compelling future anywhere in life? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love oceans, and I love that the conversation around oceans is starting to get louder um, because it is such a critical part of our environment. Um, and there's so many great quotes around, you know, why do we call it Earth when it's actually mostly ocean and things like that, that I think help drive awareness that, that is really critically missing from this discussion mm -hmm. um, around how important our oceans are. So that, and I have to throw my kids in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kids get... How old are your kids? They're 11 and 7. 11 and 7. Yeah. And they are, you know, they're getting the education that all, a lot of the kids are today where environment is part of their, their lives. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm hopeful that that generation will actually look at us and say, why did you have to work so hard? This is so easy, it's so natural, mm. it's so irresistible to just live a healthier life. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, thank Really, thank you. you for spending time with us. This is it's fun. a complete joy to be with you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, have a great day. You too.